We saw in elementary calculus that the operation or transformation of differentiation and integration transforms one function into another function. So say for example we have x squared and we want to differentiate it. We transform it into a different function called 2x. Here on the other hand we have x, the integral of x squared dx and we transformed it into 1 third x cubed plus c. So these are what we call two transform processes that exhibit the linearity property such that the transform of a linear combination of function is just a linear combination of so the transforms. Now we're going to look at a special type of transform which helps simplify the analysis of trying to find the function associated with differential equations. Now we're going to take a look at the definition of the Laplace transform. So here what we're going to do is take this symbol script L because we're going to use it to transform this function f of t to another function which will be a function of s. However, we're going to define it as follows. We're going to integrate from 0 to infinity. We multiply this function by some kernel in here. We're going to call it by s of t and then multiply by f of t and integrate it with respect to t. So we're taking this function f of t and we're converting this function into another function called the Laplace transform and this is called f of s. So after we integrate with respect to t time, the time is integrated out and now we have this function to be only as a function of s. And we by definition, we note that this Laplace transform will exist provided that this integral converges. Hence, when we convert the function f of t into an f of s, we use a lowercase to denote the function and we denote the capital letter to denote its Laplace transform. So, if I say the Laplace transform of f of t, it's now function of s where we use a lowercase for time and the uppercase for the Laplace transform domain. Another example is if I use a Laplace transform of g of t, then we change it to a cap and it's a function of s. And finally, if I take a Laplace transform of y of t, I convert that into a cap y of s. So that's how we transform from one function in the time domain into another function, which we call the Laplace domain. Now let's apply the definition of Laplace transform with a simple function. Say our function is a constant f of t. So our Laplace transform for f of t is equal to going again by definition 0 to infinity f of t e to the minus st dt but f of t is 1, so it's just 0 to infinity, 1, e to the minus st dt, which is equal to the negative e to the minus st divided by s integrating from 0 to infinity. Well, the upper limit is just minus 1 over s e to the minus s infinity minus minus becomes a plus so that's 1 over s e to the minus s to the 0. When you evaluate the upper limit that's just 0 and we're just adding 1 over s and e to the 0 is just 1 or equal to 1 over s. So the Fourier transform of a constant is 1 over s, 
Okay, so the Laplace transform of 1 is equal to 1 over s. If I had Laplace transform of 5, it's a constant, but because of linearity, it's 5 over s. Okay, let's do another example of applying the definition of the Laplace transform in which we have again shown here. This time f of t is equal to t and therefore applying our definition we just substitute t into this expression and that yields the integral from 0 to infinity t e to the minus st dt. Now we're going to evaluate this integral by integration by parts where we define this part right here to be du and then this part we'll define as v. So the integral by parts is given as follows u v du is equal to uv minus u dv. So here we have v is equal to t, which implies that dv is equal to dt. du we defined as e to the minus st dt, which implies that u equal to negative 1 over s e to the minus st and that's the beauty of the exponential is because you get the same exponential multiplied by by some scale factor in this case the scale factor is negative 1 over s now substituting these expression here we put it into this equation the integration by parts therefore from 0 to infinity t e to the minus st dt is equal to uv u is just negative 1 over s e to the minus st v is t. We integrate this from 0 to infinity. Minus the integral from 0 to infinity u is negative 1 over s e to the minus st and then v dv is just dt. Now we can factor out the negative 1 over s and that yields our definition what we did earlier for a constant where our constant is equal to 1. So let me rewrite this. First let's note this first expression here. When you put the upper limit this goes to 0. When you put the lower limit for t, this goes to 0 also. So this expression here is just 0. Now the minus and the minus makes it a plus right here. We factor out the 1 over s since it's not a function of t and now we have e to the minus st dt going from 0 to infinity. But we did this earlier and it turns out to be also 1 over s, so that's just 1 over s times 1 over s, or 1 over s squared. So the Laplace transform for t is equal to 1 over s squared.